जेनी ये सब करना पड़ेगा जेनी व्हाट ये रह गया in this video, we're talking about Jenny and Summit and what is quite possibly one of the most iconic 90 Day Fiancé scenes ever. So let's not waste any time. Let's just talk about that scene. Jenny, can you bring the broom? I don't know where the broom is. It means you don't know use the broom. <sighs> Jenny, you have to do this. Jenny? Uh, what? <sighs> Smith's mom is just trying to make me feel bad. She's trying to make me look bad, and she's just trying to find reasons to say Jenny is not good enough for my son. Now, before we start talking about whether this is all right or wrong, let's just be honest for a second here. Their house, by any standards, was filthy. I mean, how hard is it to wipe a table, especially when your potential future mother-in-law, who, by the way, hates your guts, is coming around to see you? Here's what really baffles me. Jenny knew she was going to be under the microscope. She knew that Mama Summit was looking for any excuse to make her look bad. And she knew that her husband didn't have her back. He warned her of what to expect. What I need from you is just please have my back, right? Like defend me if they if they start coming at me have my back don't don't throw me under the bus if they are saying something let them say so knowing all of that why the heck didn't she just tidy up a little bit before they got there what was she thinking when you've got flies and crap all over the floor food all over the place and just an all-round nasty unhygienic kitchen by the way in a hot humid country she should have known what was coming because make no mistake everyone else did submit his dad you me everyone we all knew that those fake hugs and smiles they weren't gonna last just look at the eyes of this lady this is a lady getting ready to unleash havoc now don't get me wrong i don't think it's right or fair that the whole family was just standing there watching and bossing jenny around i'm not condoning or excusing that i wasn't comfortable with it considering this is the woman he says he loves i'd have expected and i'd have wanted to see summit pick up a broom and help out after all if jenny's made to look bad in front of his parents well, that doesn't reflect well on him either. But then I've got to take a step back and remember, this is 90 Day Fiancé the other way. Jenny has moved to India. This isn't the States. Like it or not, things are different and that's just the way it is. We can't judge this by our standards. Jenny has to accept that Indian culture, especially around that whole role of daughter-in-law and what's expected of them, it's very, very different. Like, even her best friend, one of the very few people who actually supports her in this relationship, she's quite clear that what Summit's mum is doing isn't out of the ordinary. It's exactly how any Indian mum would react. The friend even says her own mother-in-law also lived with her for six months. And so, when her best friend is telling Jenny that this is just how things are, well, she's just going to have to get used to it. Pardon the pun, but she's made her bed. She's just going to have to lie in it. As long as Summit doesn't kick her out and put his parents in it first. This is going to be your parents' room, right? I want to, I want them to do whatever they want. We can offer them, like, if they want, they can sleep on in our bedroom, so we can sleep on a new bed. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, my point is, it's easy to look at this from a Western viewpoint and say Summit's mum is some kind of evil woman, Summit and his family are just using Jenny as a servant, but I don't think that's necessarily fair. They're just doing what other Indian families do. From everything I've researched into this, in India, extended families and parents living with their kids is the norm. Children, especially the eldest son, in other words, Summit, they're expected to look after their parents. And daughter-in-laws are expected to move in with the man's family and look after his parents. Cook, clean, do all the household chores. Men do not do housework in India. That's not like me just saying that. There's facts on this. Now, of course, all of this is complicated by the fact Jenny's older than her potential mother-in-law. But let's not forget, Jenny did actually spend time living with Summit's family before the show started. Started. The first time she went out to India to meet Summit in person, she was a guest at Summit's mum and dad's house. So she should have seen, she would have known that family dynamic firsthand. 
She should have some kind of sense of what living with Sumit's family would be like. This shouldn't come as any real shock. And hey, let's just point out the fact that Sumit was loving every second of it. I don't think I've ever seen him look so happy. Look at him. He was loving it. I'm happy to see the way the house is getting clean. I'm not saying Jenny uh, don't do a good job, but my mom is asking her to do a better than uh, whatever she's doing. I like it. It's almost as if he needed his mummy to come and help fight his battles for him. He needed mummy Summit to come in and teach Jenny how to clean. I can't help but feel that right before our eyes, we're starting to see some cracks in Jenny and Summit's relationship. And we're beginning to get a glimpse into not just the cultural differences, but I also think the age gap is starting to play a role here. Jenny, by her own admission, is at a phase in her life where she's ready to kick back, take things slow, wake up late, have lunch dates with her friends. And and clearly she doesn't enjoy doing the housework. She's well and truly in the retirement phase of her life and she's determined to enjoy it and more power to her because she's doing it in a country where her money actually stretches a really long way. If she was still in the States, she wouldn't have a choice. She would still be working. She isn't wealthy, particularly not by American standards. Well, let me ask you this. What are your plans if three months from now you're out of cash? I was actually told apply for social security before i go because they'd still be going in my bank here right with the little amount of money that jenny has in savings she doesn't even have enough money to buy a car but summit on the other hand well he's still in his 30s and he says he's not ready to lounge around all day doing nothing he wants to work he wants to be busy he's getting itchy feet staying at home all day living that retirement life presumably sponging off jenny now that whole living off jenny thing I also think that's quite interesting. Do you remember how in order to get divorced from his ex-wife, Summit's dad had to lend him quite a lot of money? I made a great expenditure to end the marriage of my son. It is not easy to pay such a big amount. I have gathered the money from my relatives, my friends and from bank. And at the time, Summit swore that he'd do whatever needed to pay back his dad. Maybe that might also be factoring in as to why he's so desperate to now start earning his own money and not just relying on Jenny. Anyway, I think it's safe to say we're starting to see a different side to Summit. He talks a good game about how he likes a strong, independent, older American woman and how he wishes Indian society would accept their relationship. And up to a point, he's not afraid to go against Indian societal norms and even fall out with friends and family over Jenny. But when all is said and done, he's only willing to go just so far. He's not prepared to go all the way. It's been nine years and he's still not married her. It's almost as if he's leaving himself an escape hatch just in case he needs to back out of the relationship. He doesn't want to totally burn all of his bridges with his family, just in case he needs to go running back to them. And I've got a little bit of a theory about this. Tell me what you think about this. I wonder if, even if it's just subconsciously, I wonder if there's an element of Summit trying to use Jenny to get back at his mum and dad. Remember, his parents forced him into a loveless, arranged marriage. Could it be that the reason he's gone this far in a weird way is he wants his parents to feel that same pain that they caused him by forcing him to marry his ex-wife? I don't know. I think he still harbours a bit of resentment against his parents and this might just be his way of showing that resentment and, and inflicting some kind of pain on them. Let me know your thoughts on that. Is that too deep? Am I reading too much into that? Leave a comment down below. I do believe that he loves Jenny, but now we're beginning to see that what he actually wants is a wife that will adopt the Indian ways. He says he needs his parents to accept her, and he says he needs his parents to approve of a potential marriage, but I think we're starting to see that actually he might not be as keen on this older American wife as he thought he was. What he actually wants is an older American wife who's willing to adopt Indian family values around the house and also adapt to a potential extended family. And that's where I think the issue lies because I don't see Jenny any adapting to that extent. As the old saying goes, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, Mr. Summit. The more I see this side of Summit, the more I start to wonder whether his heart is 100% into it. If you had to put your money on it right now, when push comes to shove, how confident are you that these two will ever get married? 50-50? Is that generous? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It's starting to seem like they're not on the same wavelength. He wants to live in a clean house. He wants her to do all the cooking and cleaning. 
He wants to get out and work. She just wants to chill and enjoy her retirement. So yeah, what are your thoughts on this? Am I being too harsh or should Jenny have been more prepared? Should she have cleaned up even just a little bit before Summit's parents came? And could we be starting to see cracks in Jenny and Summit's relationship? Is there trouble on the horizon? Let me know your thoughts. Let's carry on the conversation down in the comments. And hey, do me a favor. If you've made it this far to the end of the video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for lots more 90 Day Fiancé videos. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.